I recently posted a video on spark plug replacement and recommended the use of NTCs on spark plug threads, and I just wanted to uh, have a quick discussion of the suggestion in view of this uh, technical bulletin from NGK spark plugs. So the topic of the bulletin is the use of NTCs compounds and spark plug threads that have a metal shell plating, zinc or nickel plating. The issue they're identifying is that applying NTCs to threads of spark plugs that have a metal plating allows the installer to mistakenly over-tighten the spark plug in the cylinder head. This stretches and fatigues the threads of the spark plugs, causing a much higher probability that the plug will break during installation, or in some cases upon removal. And uh, they provide some examples of what can happen. The solution? For spark plugs with special metal plating, simply do not use NTCs on initial installation. I'm going to focus on the word initial here, and maybe we can talk about what happens if the installation is not quote-unquote initial. All NGK spark plugs are manufactured with a special trivalent zinc chromate shell plating. So this is a brand new plug. You can see the shiny coating on the threads is uh, this zinc chromate shell plating uh, that is designed to prevent both corrosion and seizure to the cylinder head. That's eliminating the need for any thread compounds or lubricants. So here NGK is saying uh, if you have a new spark plug with this coating, do not use NTCs. Additional information, NGK recommends only using spark plugs with metal plating on aluminum head applications. So interesting that they're identifying aluminum here as a possible issue, and we can, we can talk about that in a minute. To prevent damage to the head and plug, metal shell plating acts as a lubricant which breaks away from the main body of the spark plug during removal, preventing damage to spark plug and or threads in the cylinder head. Interestingly enough, they provide another page. And in the summary, they're saying that all spark plugs that have a blackened or dull appearance on the metal body, so you can see the difference between the NGK, brand new NGK plug, and um, a plug without this coating, offer no protection against seizing or bonding to the cylinder head. And so it is with these spark plugs that NTCs would be required. A spark plug that has a shiny silver appearance on the metal body usually indicates that the plug is manufactured with metal shell plating and therefore will not require NTCs. So um, one thing that we can infirm from this bulletin is that some sort of protection whether it's a coating that's applied from the factory or anti-seize is required when you install a spark plug, especially in an aluminum head. Now, let's keep in mind that the body of, of a spark plug is made of steel. And so in this particular case, there's a coating on it, and, and here there isn't, okay? So the reason uh, that uh, some protection is required is really because of galvanic corrosion and I wanted to do is just very quickly simulate with this nut and bolt of what happens when you install a steel spark plug in an aluminum cylinder head. So this nut, of course, is not aluminum, but just for the sake of uh, this demonstration, let's pretend that it is. In order to have galvanic corrosion, you first of all have to have dissimilar metals. And we can talk about what makes metals uh, dissimilar. But here we have aluminum and steel. The second thing that's required to have galvanic corrosion is electricity can pass from one part to the other, and so second condition is satisfied. And the third condition that's required for galvanic corrosion to occur is that there is electrolyte that is in contact with both one and the other parts. And you know, in this particular case, the electrolyte is gonna come from the inside of the combustion chamber and occupy the interstitial space between the threads. And the question is, what electrolyte do we have in there? We don't have salt water in the combustion chamber. No, we don't, but we have combustion products, we have acids, we have moisture in the cylinder that condenses out when you shut the engine off. So over time, there's going to be some electrolytic substance between these threads, and so corrosion is going to occur. So how do you solve the issue of corrosion? Well, one way is to introduce uh, a sacrificial anode. And so what NGK has done is they applied a coating to these threads. So the coating, we can refer back to the bulletin, and we can see that uh, zinc is mentioned here. Zinc is a very good sacrificial anode, 
and that is what NGK is doing. Let's take a look at something here. So this is a spark plug and the threads have been cleaned. Came out of uh, this engine and it's, it's been there for a few thousand miles. It was installed originally without NTCs on it. And you can see that this plug looks very much like the plug that they're saying uh, will require NTCs upon installation. And so you could ask what happened uh, to this uh, zinc coating, the shiny coating that was on the threads. Well, I remember this is a sacrificial anode. Its, its purpose is to eventually dissipate and disappear, right? It's, so what it's trying to do is trying to prevent corrosion of other uh, parts of the system at its own expense. So of course this coating is going to eventually be gone. Uh, and you could say, well, maybe this is just a color change and this just happened because, you know, the combustion chamber is quite hot and the plug is very hot and that's why, uh, I mean, the coating is still there and, um, you know, this is just a change in color. I'm sure that some coating is still on the plug, but it's interesting to compare this plug with another plug uh, that was in the engine after. And so this uh, spark plug was installed with anti-seize on it and you can still see that the shiny coating remains. So the question is, why the difference between these two? And as far as I can figure out, when you apply NTCs between the threads, it occupies this interstitial space. So there's so one way to combat corrosion is by providing an, a sacrificial anode, but what, what is a, another possible way? So I mentioned uh, the presence of electrolyte. In this case, it's going to be electrolyte between the threads. What if you were able to keep this electrolyte out? Well, if you put a substance on these threads that would block or prevent electrolyte from entering this interstitial space between the threads right here, then you would, you would not have galvanic corrosion. And so you, could you use grease for that purpose? Yes, but grease is relatively low temperature. There are some high temperature greases, I don't know, maybe 600 degrees Fahrenheit, but at combustion chamber temperatures, they're not gonna last very long at all. Um, NTCs, is, there is some grease there, it's the, your a carrier, but mostly it's metal. Now. Um, just a quick overview of what makes metals dissimilar. So this is a galvanic series chart. You can see that it's listing various substances in order from really high reactivity to really low reactivity. So for example, gold and platinum are considered to be noble metals. They don't react much, if at all, with anything. Magnesium, zinc, aluminum, these guys are at the top of the chart, so they're gonna react quite a bit, right? So when do you need to worry about galvanic corrosion between two different metals? Usually when the potentials between them exceed 0.2 volts. So for example, if you take, I don't know, zinc and copper, you can see that there's a voltage range provided for an electrode made of this material. It's between one and 107. Here it's 0.31 and 0.40. And so the difference between the two ranges definitely greater than 0.2. So would you have galvanic corrosion here? Yes, you would. So for example, so let's say that you had an uncoated spark plug, a spark plug with a steel body, steel threads, and you inserted it into an aluminum head. So based on this chart, so let's say that our head is made of aluminum and our spark plug is steel. If we look where these two lines cross, it's in an area where galvanic corrosion risk exists. So again, what did NGK do? They uh, provided a sacrificial anode on the threads. And so now we have zinc rather than steel. So our head is still aluminum. Now the threads are zinc. So you can see that there's absolutely no risk of corrosion as long as the coating is on there. The reason I'm advocating the use of anti seize is because you're kind of getting a double whammy there. So first of all, by using uh, anti seize and you know anti seize, for example, this product here contains zinc oxide and also aluminum, right? So clearly, you're introducing a material into the system which is very similar to this. So you basically have more of a good thing, which is a sacrificial anode. The second thing that happens, as I mentioned, you're also blocking off this inter interstitial space and preventing, you're preventing electrolyte from entering from the side of the combustion chamber. So you are acquiring even more protection uh, in, in that way.
Now, another interesting thing about this bulletin is the fact that they are recommending the use of anti-seize on a spark plug that doesn't have a coating. And they're implying, at least, that on subsequent reinstallations of a plug that has lost its coating, NTCs should probably be applied. I mean, it's kind of an implication, but anyway. I don't really see a difference between these two situations. If you have a spark plug like this, and you coat it with NTCs, it's considered to be a lubricated, threaded system. If you have a steel spark plug and you coat it with NTCs, again, you have lubricated threads. The coefficient of friction is going to be essentially the same, right? So is this concern that they're presenting valid? Yes, absolutely. Any fastener that is torqued down and has, let's say, a torque that's specified, uh, those torques generally are meant for clean and dry fasteners. Uh, not lubricated fasteners. It might be very lightly lubricated, but essentially clean and dry. So it's assuming that both sets of threads are clean and dry. If you introduce a lubricant, and anti-seize is actually a very good lubricant, right? What happens is that there's a lot less friction in, in the threaded system. So whatever torque that's applied actually does a lot more work. You're stretching the threads a lot more. The clamp-up force is much greater. And can it potentially create this problem? Yes, but there is a very well-known solution to this, to this issue, and that is decreasing the amount of torque that's being applied. So let's say, for the sake of argument, uh, uh, I'm not even gonna put units on it. Let's say that the torque you need to apply uh, to a, a clean and dry system, threaded system, is 10. Well, if you just discount that torque by 30% and apply a torque of seven, then you should be fine. And that is exactly what I kind of uh, discussed in, in, in the video about spark plug replacement. So, and you can see that they are saying that NTC is required here. However, they don't really mention about what needs to be done as far as reducing uh, the torque input. So, you know, I agree with a lot of things that have been said here, but overall, I, I think it's a little bit confusing especially when they do discuss the fact that anti is required and they don't really say what needs to be done as far as the torque. And uh, also in a situation where we're talking about initial installation, well, what about subsequent reinstallations? And, it, you know, it might be necessary to remove and reinstall plugs several times. One more thing I wanted to mention quickly is that using anti and you can see that, that you can kind of observe a much greater difference here between these threads and the threads below, that's because these threads are getting hotter. And uh, that's, that's the reason that the NTC has burnt off. Um, but this is also kind of evidence of how uh, hot or cool the spark, is, spark plug is running. It's much more difficult to see it here. I know that not all these threads are dark. This plug could not have been running that, that hot. But because my uh, shiny coating has worn away, uh, it's much harder to read this plug. So that is another reason why applying NTCs is beneficial, is if you need to actually read plugs, it gives you information that's easier to kind of obtain at a glance. Of course, this is just one factor that you have to consider, and you have to, of course, look at the porcelain insulator and actually cut the plug apart to see where the carbon rings are, but I'm just saying as far as the body of the plug, this is information that you can use in tuning. So in my book, I don't see why you wouldn't use anti -seize. I think it's, uh, it's a beneficial thing on many levels. You just have to be quite careful with the applied torque, especially when it comes to aluminum heads. I would uh, uh, reduce the torque by 30%. Uh, so, you know, just multiply whatever torque value you have by 0.7, and that's uh, the torque that you should be applying to, to your spark plug. So we talked about galvanic series here. There are other similar series out there, electrochemical series, reactivity series. And you can see, I mean, this is, these, these are just partial. Uh, they're very similar to this. You know, they list elements in similar order. However, you can see here that zinc is ahead of aluminum. It's supposed to be more reactive. And in this series, say electrochemical series, aluminum is shown to be more reactive than zinc. So what's the deal? 
the way these series are generated, you know, the conditions that are used to set up these systems are different. And the, the big difference is that oxides of aluminum, for example, make aluminum much more stable. So once it's oxidized, it's not as reactive. And uh, oxides are just, they're not present when you set up the system for electrochemical series. They are definitely present when you set up uh, a system for galvanic series, and that's why the switcheroo. There are a number of different types of anti-seize out there. You have never seize, which I mentioned before, and contains zinc. Um, also, other materials, you have, you have aluminum there, you have calcium fluoride. So I would consider this to be maybe, I don't know, zinc, aluminum type antices. This formulation is identified as copper formula. It doesn't really say what the ingredients are. I'm again going to assume it's a blend of a bunch of things, including aluminum, including other things. This one just says aluminum. Uh, so the question is, which ones are best, say, if you're uh, putting antices in a spark plug that's going into aluminum head? You could say, well, let's look at our chart. So let's say that we have our aluminum head, and then we are coating our spark plug with copper. That really does not look good, does it? Seems like we are in a situation where we have galvanic corrosion risk. I mean, not so much with zinc and not, not really with aluminum. So you have, you know, zinc uh, coating and aluminum head, no risk. Aluminum coating, aluminum head, no risk. So that's fine. So is copper bad? There's also nickel type antices. Is that bad? You know, I really don't think so. I mean, most of these manufacturers actually recommend the use of these on spark plug threads. I think a good example to think about, uh, oxyacetylene welding. Acetylene is a very kind of a dangerous substance, and one of the things that it does, it, it forms explosive compounds when it comes in contact with copper. So you should never really run acetylene through copper piping. However, if you think about it, when acetylene gets to your torch, it's in contact with the material of the torch, and what's, torch made, what's the torch made out of? It's brass, and brass uh, contains copper. So uh, clearly, that is not a problem. So just because you have some copper in the system doesn't create a problem for uh, formation of explosive compounds with acetylene. So I think a very similar situation exists with anti -seed. It's how much of what element you have and where the proportions are. I, I think they're all probably safe for purposes of aluminum heads and another thing to keep in mind, too, is that you know, different aluminum alloys contain different amounts of copper, for example, right? Some don't at all, and some copper is alloyed. So I don't know if I could recommend and say that one antices is better than another or don't use copper in an aluminum head. I, I haven't seen any problems. If, if anybody has any experience with um, using antices in a particular application and maybe they saw some issues that occurred, uh, it would be great to hear from you. Please uh, post a comment and, and let us know.